Oh, good morning, everyone. It's um, really great to be here and I'm thrilled to be invited to come and talk to you today at such an exciting event. Um, I've been in the job as Head of Planning and Programs for um, Transport for New South Wales now for two and a half years. And I must say during that time I've become a recent convert to walking. have done a lot of cycling in my time coming from Canberra. Um, born in Canberra, uh, went to university in Canberra, went to school in Canberra, brought up five children in Canberra, then got offered a job in Sydney, came to Sydney two and a half years ago and took up walking with a vengeance. I remember I was telling Dr Tolly and Peter McHugh yesterday, my husband took me as a celebration um, to uh, Doyle's restaurant at um, Watson's Bay, which was rather nice. And as we were leaving, he said to me, we'll catch a cab. And I said, oh, okay. And he started walking. And I said, don't you just call the, get the restaurant to call a cab? He said, no, no, in Sydney, you just walk up the road, you know, there'll be plenty of cabs. Well, half an hour later and right up the top of the hill, <laughs> um, I could say that the lunch had degenerated into some quite cross words. Uh, but since then, I've um, taken up walking quite solidly and I walk about nine eight to nine kilometres a day. I bought myself a little dog, live in an apartment, so I have to get the dog out there and walk. Um, also, my daughter, 29-year-old daughter, has challenged me. She um, asked me to get onto the My Walk app, Map My Walk app. And we now compete to see who's walked the most kilometres in any given week or month. And I must say, she usually beats me, but uh, it does keep me focused. Look, what I wanted to talk to you today was some of the wonderful things that my team's been doing. Um, uh, Amber Davidson, who's here in the front, and Helen Johnson, um, who's also here in the audience, have been doing some wonderful things over the last couple of months to provide for the government um, a strong focus on cycling and walking. Um, Transport for New South Wales has now released a number of key planning documents um, that provide a blueprint for the way people will travel and move around our towns over the next 20 years. In December uh, 2012, we released the first statewide long-term transport master plan, which provides uh, a statewide multimodal transport framework for delivering infrastructure and services over the next 20 years. This is quite a challenge and we're becoming quite well known for our um, long-term transport master plan. I think it's the first statewide plan ever and um, a number of the things that are in it are now starting to be implemented. Since then, um, in December 2013, we released a city centre access strategy, which is about how people move around our CBD. We um, also delivered specific modal plans, including plans for walking and cycling. And you can see those plans up there, which I have here, up on, um, up on the screen. And it's really good to be able to have a separate plan for walking and a separate plan for cycling. We're able to give a strong emphasis to each of those modes. These plans were developed based on a strong body of evidence. Uh, we went through a lot of our paperwork to see what people have been writing into us. We did a huge amount of modelling and planning, looking at how um, cycling and walking integrated into our overall transport system, how it was part of an integrated transport network. We also undertook community consultation, largely through the long-term transport master plan work. A lot of people said to us, one of the big issues for them is um, safety. A lot of people wanted to be able to have their children to cycle or their children walk to school, but issues around safety was a significant issue. But also one of the other issues that they raised was a lack of infrastructure, that often they're, they want to go out cycling and walking and um, after a short distance you hit a number of barriers because the cycleways and walkways aren't well connected. So for, for the first time, we now have plans in place that ensure that these issues are now being addressed. Transport for New South Wales recognises that good public transport also relies on strong connections with active transport modes, with more customers walking and cycling every day. We're hoping to reduce the burden of road congestion, free up capacity on public transport, and also contribute to more livable and healthy communities. We've taken a new approach to developing our cycling and walking plans, and key elements of our new approach include, sorry I'm not very good at this, uh, focusing on our investments on areas that are likely to make the biggest difference. So what we've done is identified two kilometre catchments um, for walking and five kilometre catchments for cycling around our busy centres and interchanges. We've tried to focus our initiatives on those particular spatial arrangements. We've been promoting the use of existing infrastructure, especially for short trips, and we also are looking much more closely at how we provide information, apps and wayfinding, um, how we influence travel behaviour and how we promote um, those particular modes. 
We're also um, seeking to work collaboratively with partners, particularly our local councils, who make a strong investment in, it, in things such as cycling and walking. We want to look at how we integrate walking and cycling, cycling into our community planning. Um, we've also been examining how cities around the world, and we saw a lot of that from Dr Tolly this morning, around um, how cities actually work and how they're, where they're actually heading and how do they design their neighbourhoods. I think urban planning is a key part of trying to get a good walking experience. One of the things we've put out recently is our Sydney City, city Access Strategy and has a clear focus on, it, uh, on cycling and walking. In fact, if you look at the strategy, we've actually identified that the centre part of the CBD is predominantly for walking, the two, so, two sort of stretches either side, uh, multimodal, and then cars, we're trying to move to the outside of the CBD. Um, and this is based on the fact that over 90% of people uh, moving around the CBD move around on foot. I think it's about 93%. So when you think of the amount of movements happening in our CBD, and that most of them happen by pedestrians, it's really important that we um, develop a strong focus on how people are going to get around. There's also been um, a growth in cycling in the CBD with the number of bike trips at key locations doubling in the past three years, which is quite significant. We have now new issues emerging, congestion on sidewalks, and Dr Tolley told me yesterday when he walked all the way from the beginning of George Street to my office up in near Central Station at Lee Street, that it was quite a challenge moving around those footpaths. Um, congestion at intersections is increasing. We need to actually look at how we get a better balance of these things um, in, our, in our city centre. Some of the things that we're actually putting in place is lowering the speed limit to 40 kilometres in parts of the CBD, and we're still working on the boundaries for that. The creation of a pedestrian zone on 40% of George Street as part of the CBD and South East Light Rail project. We're looking at decluttering and improving the conditions of footpaths. Reducing pedestrian delays and congestion at interchanges through reprioritisation of phasing of traffic lights, giving pedestrians more time um, at traffic um, light, light spaces. Improving wayfinding across the CBD, including at transport interchanges. This is something dear to my heart, have been relatively new to the city centre. Uh, I caught the ferry one day, deciding to be a good public transport user. I happened to live in Abbotsford and the ferry goes from the end of my street. I decided to get off at King's Street Wharf and then I didn't know where to go because there was no signs and I didn't actually know the geography. So I kept saying to people, where's the local train station? Where's Wynyard Station? They said, oh, just up the hill. Well, just up the hill it was quite a long way up the hill. Um, but there was actually no signs pointing you to other modes of transport. Providing disability compliant crossings and signals and managing shared zones more effectively. A particular focus on completing um, a separated bicycle network in the CBD, and this is something that came up strongly through our consultations. People wanted to see more separated cycleways um, from pedestrian areas. Um, and we want to be able to accommodate the growing number of people that are choosing to ride in the CBD. I don't know why it doesn't click on. So we're trying to back this up with some major investments. Um, clearly it's very hard to um, create good connections if you don't actually invest in how people are going to move around. One of those is a fully accessible pedestrian link between Wynyard Station and the developing CBD on the Western Corridor, which is Barangaroo. Now, when you think about Barangaroo, it's going to have 23,000 people per day moving to those three office towers um, that are going to be built by uh, around late 2015. So that's a significant number of people we have to accommodate moving to the western side of the CBD. Um, this is a $306 million investment, and we expect that to be open in 2015. It's about a nine metre wide, nine metre wide walkway, and um, it, it will create, a, create, create a quite a vibrant pedestrian space. As you can see, um, we've looked at how we can get more light into the area and how we can actually create quite a signature space. It will exit at a place we're calling Transport Square, and we're also looking at planning all of our transport modes, trying to um, uh, come into that particular area. Um, part of our cycling and walking strategy is focused on um, how we can get connected networks into other centres as well as the CBD, um, how we can support our transport interchanges, we heard a lot about that earlier, um, how, we can, how we can actually um, promote people using existing networks and as I said working not just with councils but also with developers through urban planning when, and with um, the private sector on how to promote um, cycling and walking. 
We're looking at how we can use our evidence-based better. Uh, we've started collecting data for the regions. Uh, we do a, tra a regular household travel survey and we've started expanding that. Uh, we're trying to work out what's working well and what's not and how we can actually monitor um, th uh, things such as walking and cycling. We're undertaking a wide range of research. Um, we're also looking at how we how we work with others to promote the importance of improved connectivity, safety and security and better facilities to help people get around more effectively. One of the other challenges is for us is prioritising cost of effective solutions. Uh, we know that getting people to walk and cycle more helps reduce the costs of road congestion, frees up capacity on the public transport, reduces infrastructure costs and lowers greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, we're working um, with a range of groups uh, heavily involved, involved in the housing supply work going on in the state to develop cycle-friendly neighbourhoods as a lot of those housing supply areas are developed. Um, we're also working with the Department of Health on how we can actually support some of their initiatives to try and get um, people to cycle more and walk more to reduce the burden on our health system. We're developing a whole range of new tools. Um, tools are important in trying to encourage people to think about um, cycling and walking. Um, we saw before that um, Austroads, for example, is rethinking their, their road design rules. We're also looking at a walkability index. Um, this is a standard that will create a benchmark for how we design walkable communities. And it's going to be developed in um, consultation with local communities, um, councils, and a whole range of key stakeholders. We wanted to provide a new um, New South Wales pedestrian level of service. We want it to encourage existing um, measures to be expanded. And we also want to make sure that any of the uh, work that we're working on now has the benefit of uh, some of this thinking. We're also looking at how strategic tools can be developed, um, such as technology tools to support some of these initiatives. Uh, we're also working with uh, non-government um, organisations and with the community sector. Um, uh, the Pedestrian Council, uh, Bicycle New South Wales, a whole lot of others on how we can actually promote cycling and walking in our community. We want to create and support a culture for active transport um, and we need to recognise that without actually creating that kind of a culture it's going to be hard to get people um, such as myself and others to take up walking. Um, I encouraged um, Dr Tolly to walk down the Wynyard Walk yesterday, uh, not the Wynyard Walk, down the Devonshire Tunnel which is um, something I walk down several times a day to catch the train into this part of the CBD. Um, for someone like me as a female, sort of later in the evening, finishing working late, it doesn't feel really encourage you to walk to the public transport system. In fact, it make, means I usually try and find a taxi. So some of those things we're trying to work through, how do we actually make some of our existing spaces more attractive? Um, our futures documents highlight a number of new projects that we're proposing to invest in besides the Wynyard Walk. We're looking at new bridges um, for walking and cycling, including the construction of the Nepean River Green Bridge to reconnect communities on both sides of the river, providing a more direct route for short trips between Emu Plains and Penrith. A bridge in Moore Park to support connections to new light rail services, including for sporting and entertainment events. A bridge in Beecroft to provide safe access to the local school town centre and railway station, as well as a bridge at Heathcote to provide safe access over the Princess Highway. We're also exploring the feasibility of using rail corridors to deliver improved transport links. And this is an example of just one of those. Um, this is the Future Ultimo pedestrian network, which is being developed by the Sydney Harbour Foreshore Authority. And it's looking how we can actually extend some of those links um, further south to residential growth areas, such as Redfern, using the disused goods line in the rail corridor. And Amber and I walked it quite a while ago to actually look at, you know, what is possible there. And it's quite exciting. There's a lot of um, development we could do. Um, we could put um, retail down there or we could put cafes and things like that as well. It's a whole area that's not used well at this point in time. We want to connect that area to the new convention centre and to the key interchanges, such as the interchange at Redfern and Central Station. Um, we're looking at opportunities to connect people to major employment centres and transport hubs, including currently undertaking feasibility studies for possible future pedestrian bridges at Brookvale Interchange and George's River. We're looking at how we make it easier for people to ride um, for transport by investing in state priority bicycle corridors to, uh, to in each direction, north, east, south and west. This includes completing connections to North Sydney, uh, Bondi Junction, 
Randwick, Green Square, the airport and inner west suburbs. We're also focusing on active transport corridors within a five kilometre catchment of our major centres. We're doing a lot of work with Parramatta at the moment, Penrith, Liverpool and Blacktown. Another key area of focus for us is looking at how interchanges work. The government set aside 770 million over a four year period to make our uh, transport interchanges more accessible and more friendly. Um, we're looking at things such as um, provision of lighting, CCTV, better undercover areas, uh, more seating when people arrive <coughs> at their destinations or waiting for a public transport, and as I mentioned a number of times, wayfinding and signage. We now have more than 120 of these projects um, either complete or underway as part of that program. One of the key aspects of that program is how we can actually get more um, cycle lockers and um, cycle places um, so people can take their bikes and then catch public transport. So we're looking at how we include new secure access facilities, um, how we can locate those at um, station entrances. Um, we're looking at how we install new bike and ride facilities at places such as Redfern, Parramatta, Penrith, Blacktown, Campbelltown, Woi Woi, Gosford and Hornsby interchanges um, and providing um, new parking for up to 240 bikes at, at, across those areas. Uh, we're hoping that the benefit will be twofold, that not only will people move be more active, but they'll also save money by deferring the need to invest in major new infrastructure. We know that investing in infrastructure is not enough. We also need to work with, key, as I said earlier, key stakeholders to promote active transport. We're sponsoring the Walk 21 International Conference to be held in Sydney in October. We see that as a really exciting event and encourage everyone to get involved. We're developing information and communication tools to promote walking, such as undertaking campaigns and looking at social media. We're undertaking enhancements to walking trip planning through our new website, transportnewsouthwales.info. We're developing guidelines to support a Streets for People initiative in New South Wales. This will help facilitate local neighbourhood street closures to support walking and other activities. We're looking at enhanced pedestrian guidelines, and I mentioned the walkability index will help improve the pedestrian amenity, amenity and guide government investment. We're also looking at how we can um, support communities who come up with their own ideas. And one of the recent ones of those was a transport management association, such as um, the one that we've recently um, developed a partnership with at Macquarie Park. Transport management associations provide an interesting case study and are something that are happening internationally. Um, and for Sydney, they provide a large opportunity, particularly in, the, particularly in the way cycling, walking and public transport can support really congested areas. Transport management associations are a proven model for encouraging cycling and walking. And we found that they're common in the United States, the UK and Canada. So we actually worked closely with the Macquarie Park TMA. They came to us and said, you know, can you provide us some funding, um, help get us started um, and, and um, help us um, show the way for other businesses, and we said we would. So they've called themselves Connect Macquarie Park plus North Ride. Um, that's the public name, and if you look that name up on the website, you can find out what they're doing. It's a not-for-profit and business-led incorporated association made up of an alliance between local area businesses, the New South Wales government and the city of Ride. Um, Macquarie Park is one of our top five largest employment centres, and it's growing rapidly, so we're only too keen to see how we could help. The group now has a general manager in place. They've um, put in place a branded um, approach to what they're doing so they can promote it at the local level. They've set up a website. And they're now recruiting businesses to join in programs. The founding members of that were AMP, Capital, um, BOC, City of Ride, Goodman, Macquarie University, Novartis and Optus. New members are now signing up um, quite significantly. And they're looking at things such as pre and post tax salary sacrifice programs for public transport ticketing or bicycles, bike buddy matching for new riders to cycle with confident riders, workplace challenges for walking, cycling and public transport, walk to work and ride to work days. So they're just some of the things that that group's looking at now. We're keen to um, watch this particular initiative closely, see what a difference it can make and measure the success and then hopefully work with others to, to do similar things. I've talked a lot today about um, Sydney, the greater metropolitan region, which we're making a lot of investment and putting in place a lot of service improvements, but we're also working closely with the regions. I mentioned that the long-term transport master plan 
was a plan for the whole state. And when I was out travelling in 2012, I went to 14 different communities, met with over a thousand individuals and received thousands of submissions. And a, you know, a good lot of those were from, from the regions. And cycling and walking came up significantly. You might think that we're a car culture, but people in those communities want to be able to use some of their, their spaces. So we're working with local and state governments to look at um, how we put projects in place in those areas. Um, we're working with some of those people on um, safety road strategies, um, how to support their growth planning, um, some of their urban um, planning and so on. So overall, we're doing quite a range of things, both in terms of policy settings, infrastructure investments and partnerships to try and achieve the government's commitment to creating an integrated transport system, keeping people healthy, building livable communities and protecting our natural environment. We know that there are a wide range of stakeholders involved in walking and cycling and we're keen to work with you all to, to make the best of the investments that we're making, the best of these outcomes, but also for some new suggestions. Already um, with the digging up of George Street, as people know with the light rail, I have people writing into me making suggestions about um, why don't you have some cycling days and walking days to try and lift the pressure off the um, CBD. So we're always glad to hear from you. So thanks very much. <laughs>